the stomach, which means there is a part of you which is not in alignment with the choice that you're making, which means there is a part of you that is feeling insecure and uncertain. You got to first deal with this uncertainty before you get into this choice making. Because that uncertain part of you is also anticipating that something is going to go wrong. And with how much conviction that uncertain part of you is feeling anxious is the part that will manifest that outcome, which it is fearing. God, let this not happen. 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 And your subconscious mind doesn't understand the not. When I say don't think about the jumping elephant, the jumping monkey or the pink elephant, it already is in front of your eyes. Let this not happen. There is no concept of not happen. And how is your conscious mind designed? It has to first think about it and remind itself, oh, I'm not supposed to be thinking about it. Let's say you're making a business preposition. You're making a partnership. Your first feeling, first thought will always matter. What is unconsciously coming as your first thought, first response? If that first, first thought, first response is driven by love, if that first thought, first response that is driven by passion, compassion for someone else, it's driven by the intent to help someone out, that will not result into pain. But check, if the choice that you're making is driven by a fear, insecurity, pleasing, fear of losing a loved one, what if, if that choice that you're making is based on a what if fear, please, please wait. Don't get into that reality. But that's the reality you are magnetizing with the choice and a consequence that your mind has already anticipated in the back of the mind. And that fear will manifest. So being aware in the 2021, the best two choices. So as, uh, you know, Rama just shared about one of these basic things about whether uh, am I getting into this or not with eating habits. What are we looking at it? So Rama, the easiest thing is each day, what is the thought that that part of you that always is seeing some sort of a unhealthy part in eating, uh, you know, for you to be, uh, Rama, are you there? Yes, yes, I'm listening. You're listening. But can you also come on video just for, for a couple of questions? Is okay, okay, one second. Yeah, one second. Okay, yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Yep. So now going back to a little bit of scrutiny or unpeeling of the layer, as we say. So the intent behind making a choice of what to eat, healthy or unhealthy, was because I want to be healthy and fit because, Rama, complete this statement. I want to have a better health. Rama wants to have better health for? For myself. <laughs> so for yourself to do what? When you have better health, what will you do? I will be able to, you know, um, go for hiking. I'll be able to play sport. I'll be able to do things that I want to do. Enjoy my life. Doing all these things will give you what? Hiking, trekking, playing good um, sports. What is the purpose for yeah. which you want to do all these physical activities? I just want, I don't know. I just want to improve my health. I want to feel healthy and I want to feel better. So, which means that I want to feel better where you are right now. See, whenever we are also making a transformation choice, wherever you are, you have to first make peace with that, that reality of yours. You can't reject that reality and get to something better. We always say, I want to become better, which means what? There's a part of you, which is also getting into the part where, oh, I'm not fit enough. So that particular thought needs to completely go out from the choices that we make once again. And that part is what perhaps we need to EFT it out and whenever we are making the choice. Because there is also a fear of I will not be able to do all those good things. 
hiking, trekking. Where is this idea coming from? How long you you been thinking about doing a hiking, trekking, or playing some good sports? I I went for uh I went for hiking um on the on the New Year's Eve. Wow. And I could reach the middle of the mountain, but I could not continue because I just was trying to catch my breath. It was hard. It felt heavy. Everyone around me was just, you know, finishing till the top of the mountain and I could not. And I did relate this to my level of fitness and my weight. And I, I did not feel happy about it because I feel like I'm like 90 years old or something and I'm just 32. So I wanted to be, I wanted to be healthy. I wanted to have a better health for okay. myself. So this particular incident that triggered this sort of, uh, you know, uh, awareness that I want to be far more healthier than what this is. And next year I'm going to achieve this. So that achievement goal, because your choices also are the goals that we build sometimes. So a healthy body is also a goal. Now that's what I'm, I'm organizing on a 20, uh, I think 20, Second, 23rd, I'm doing something called Welcome 2021, which is going to be completely reviewing the entire decade because this 2021 is not only the beginning of a year, but it's also a beginning of an entire decade through which you're going to take your life to the next level. So through this entire decade, when you plan, what are you planning your choices based upon? So these two days of entire discussions that we are going to do and heal all those parts of us where all those, maybe because the way we always say that your present is the future of your past, when you change something significantly in your now, you will be able to change something about your future as well. So once again, learning to make right choices and always validating how that choice is making you feel with your body because your body will never mislead you. And your body never ever lies with you. Will never lie to you. Your body always is the first barometer or indicator where, oh, how are you feeling? The butterflies in the stomach is the biggest indicator. And if it if it if it has has the like even when you decided to go and do this hiking, were you pushed or did you see it as a challenge? Oh, I will do it. No, I wanted to. Um, I wanted to do something new, and I I love mountains, so I wanted to try this on my own. Super. No Super. one. So I wanted to. Anything. Now this is a passion intent. I wanted to do something new. That's a passion intent. I went because everybody else was going, and I didn't have an option. It is then a void behind that choice. So I wanted to do something new. Super. And where you now estimated that, okay, I could at least go up to uh, midway, appreciate yourself for that. Because that part of you as that benchmark will definitely be able to grow beyond that. And of course, when you make the choices, it doesn't happen overnight. You have to train yourself. You have to go every day when you observe yourself. And never ever criticize yourself because if any choices that you could not do or any task that you could not accomplish for which again, don't go into self-blame or I am not good enough mode because your self-esteem is a big factor in which again, you manifest or not manifest. Your self-esteem is one of the biggest areas that will manifest what do you deserve. You definitely don't deserve criticism. You definitely deserve an applaud for trying a new thing. You get that? And always keep yourself motivated to this level where you always spot a positive within that choice that you made. Never let your choices, even when you were not able to come conclude on the right note, even when it resulted into a shortcoming, do not condemn yourself. Do not label yourself not good enough. Because that's the label if you sleep with is the label that you're putting into your subconscious mind. Please remember at the end of the day. And that's definitely not what your sub subconscious mind wants to receive. Let's say even when you made a choice and it resulted into something else coming from, uh, from your environment. Uh, let me show you a couple of videos now and how the choices uh, from the environment we are getting influenced on a daily basis even before we start making, because see, again, sometimes you're not fit is the impression that sometimes the commercials also give you. 
it's trying to also break certain defense of yours like which which cooking oil will you pick up is influenced by an ad like when a housewife makes a choice when she goes into a mall there are innumerable choices that are in front of her the ad that impressioned her the most that impacted her the most is the cooking oil that she will pick up or when someone is is picking up a energy drink okay which is that energy drink where the child flying in the air grabbed the ball i want my child to be like this and that impression is where i pick up that energy drink from which means that there is always a part of my void that is impressioned by these commercials that is impressioned and influenced by these ads and that is how out of peer pressure you observe people how uh, you are making a choice and confidence self awareness self esteem a good self esteem these are healthy resources that are required for you to make a choice for you to make a choice with confidence that even when i go into a failure i am okay i am fine with it i am fine without it that's where a response of an adult comes in so the three stages which i said before making a choice so just stand there at the at the bifurcation or at the juncture where you are about to make a choice so that's the before state of mind how are you feeling are you driven by a fear are you driven by a comparison are you driven by a self esteem which is low are you driven by some insecurity or something don't make that choice wait there start breathing it out until your body feels good from within until your body completely calms down only with a calm mind now go into choice number 1 and trace it and see how your mind is perceiving the outcome for the choice number 1 come back stand there again now go into the second choice and a consequence 6 months down the line or 1 year down the line how am i getting into that choice how am i feeling check with your body because your body once again will not lie to you and each time when you're making a choice so the choice number 1 you entered you you went ahead you checked on a scale from 0 to 10 how much security am i feeling in that choice withdraw yourself come back and stand there again you go into parallel reality number 2 the choice number 2 you trace it ahead you do the future progression you see how your body is making you feel there now let's see on a scale from 0 to 10 the first reality was 8 the second reality came down to 6 now enter the third reality go ahead and see maybe that reality was just two now you don't know which is the choice that is going to be the best for you but your mind perceived the reality number 1 to be perhaps one of the yeah. most favorable ones i will not call it a good or a bad one it's the most appropriate choice that your mind can think at this stage remember that hence there is a word called most appropriate choice because the best choice you don't know which one is the best sometimes you go to a tarot reader and a tarot card reader says the option 3 if you marry is the best karmic partner for you the most appropriate partner that you will find you to be a uh, very balancing with your fate now you for sure you got into the third choice thinking that oh this is a happy dory hunky dory that my tarot card reader said this is the best choice perhaps that that partner barrages you the most and now who you go and blame you blame the tarot reader say she said that the third one was the best one no hello that one was karmically the best choice which means that this is where you actually blew a lot of your karmic imbalances you perceived it to be uh, you know the best one so just wait there stand there whenever you rely on somebody else to give you the answer you will get into such confusions and things like that because that's a subjective truth coming from the other person make a choice based on what your subconscious mind is telling you the best choice is to go within check with your body when your body is calm it generally tends to make the right choice when your body is anxious when your body is grabbing something because i will not have it based on insecurity or oh, you you for sure got into a karmic lesson so learn to identify the right choice and the karmic lesson even if you bumped into a karmic lesson take the wisdom 
and then once you've taken the wisdom your pattern will stop so it's okay to make a wrong choice is also the conclusion that you make at the end of it now question and answers uh can i ask you something yes rama uh when you're talking about the body as as um as the this biofeedback tool is there a separation between the uh, like when we're talking about anxiety for example is there a separation between the anxiety of the body if it's coming from the body or if it's coming from the mind because someone is just overthinking right so if it is overthinking let's say even if that is a bad response that your body is saying which means there's an inner child rama that you need to deal with before you get into that choice you can't get into that ruffled space and get into a choice just because your rational mind is saying no get into it we'll see later now that's how a classic high physical sexual makes a choice act first think later but that's not the best way to make a choice any which way we all have to learn to to make balanced choices each time so even when your body is either throwing anxiety or an impulse or something which is not right in the body wait there breathe out take 5 minutes drink water sit there sit on that choice for 2 days check how how is your mind and body correlating with that choice go into the references of similar choices that you made in the past what it resulted into and if those choices have a lesson learn them and then move into the next choice without learning from the previous similar choices that you made you get into a a, a kind of a reality that perhaps again will get you the same pattern coming all over again and don't get carried forward or carried away into so many people making that choice hence i need to make it wait for it it's not the herd mentality you check what will work for you what is your specialization where do you want to go because see the most important area is where are we right now to where do we want to go in between is the most important question how will you get there the how will you get there with ease and grace is when you're making that choice with awareness sometimes you make a choice with surrender now that's a that's a level that we talk about in level 4 i flow with the flow of life and then you don't regret if a choice that resulted into pain if a choice that resulted into regret heaviness resentment learn learn from a similar choice that you made in the past stand there for a while breathe out all the uh, all the doubts breathe out all your low self esteem thoughts and then make a choice with a complete deservability and faith that faith will make that attraction that's what we call the law of attraction because all your realities all your energies are focused with a single slit for that outcome and the chances are that the greater percentage that you will manifest nia you want to say something yeah so i was thinking so like when you typically let's say right before you get into a relationship or like you know you meet someone new you have that butterflies in your stomach feelings are you saying it's a good thing or a bad thing <laughs> see once again the butterflies in the stomach before you get into a relationship definitely has a similar choice that you made in the past so the butterflies in the stomach is trying to indicate something that oh there is so the excitement and and see because every new relationship for the first 6 months to 1 year it's all a honeymoon phase we all know and in that honeymoon phase everything is a la la land everything is is feeling very pleasant to your body now mm-hmm. now that's like a deception sometimes you think about it and how will you get into that relationship so when you make that choice what attribute of a person that you are getting drawn to please understand that we like a person for a certain attribute of a person because mm. if let me also tell you one more thing if you look into the eyes of a person and you fell in love which means law of attraction which is happening through the uh, you know the love at first sight it's a karmic relationship these eyes have known before please remember that all your love at first sight could be a karmic relationship because it's the eyes wait there wait there mm-hmm. yes liz i wanted to ask how do you stop yourself from making a choice too quickly like if you've told to do something at work or you know you're given <clears throat> the boss says that they want you to do this and and you're like well 
I, I, I don't want to, I choose to not to, but you realize that you need to stop talking and start thinking first, okay. but you just don't. So as I said, just at least, at least invest 30 minutes maximum, I'm saying, or even 15 minutes for you to first, as I said, think about a choice one. How will you do in that choice? Come back, withdraw your consciousness from that choice one. Stand there, go into the choice two. If I do it this way, you know, start applying your, your uh, intellect, start applying your creativity, start applying certain resources rather than impulsively jumping into an action mode because it is expected out of it and you get pushed with it. Just take five to 15 minutes of a breather. Calm yourself down, come back to the body. Because once again, when you make the choice, 100% of your consciousness need to be within your, within your body. You can't make a choice with out of the body. When you are somewhere else and you are getting pushed into that choice. So that is also not right. Anilji is wondering what does being in the body means? I read that thought, Anilji. Yeah, uh, unmute please. <clears throat> Yes, yeah, we had yeah. a wonderful session, so I'm just recollecting. Just come back to the body because being in the body, which means my consciousness and with my awareness, I'm fully present in the body. People who are in depression, they are not in the body. People who are into mood swings, they are not in the body. People who are anxious, they are ahead in time already because anxiety, which means that I want to make the known, the future, the known. So again, with anxiety, you're not in the body. So it is very important for us to first, number one choice list is to come back to the body. And then make a choice which is based on your 100% consciousness and awareness. With absolute mindfulness, you get into the choice. Yeah. Even about investments, like let's say you have only 10,000 rupees or 20,000 rupees or uh, 10,000 dirhams that you want to make an investment about. But you are anxious about this 10,000 dirhams that I will invest, whether it will come back or not. Don't make a choice or an investment with entire 20 or 10,000 dirhams that you have. What you do, 5,000 is what you make a choice with, an investment. Because you will have that buffer of the remaining 5,000, even if that choice doesn't work in your favor, you'll be able to harness that remaining buffer for the next choice that you will make with the wisdom. What did you learn? Rather than pledging your entire 10,000 dirham into that investment. Are you getting me? So make a choice with whatever you are completely comfortable. Even when you lose it, you'll be fine with it. That's where an adult with the complete body is where you're making a choice. I'm, I'm categorically referring to investments. Yes, Satya. So if you made a choice and you know for sure that this is the choice that you want, Again, choice that you want. I Pay mean, to the words. You're already, yes, you're already in the process of the choice. Yes. That, you know, going to your goal. Right. And, but you know your body, there is a part of you that is an inner child, right? Right, inner child, for sure. If there is any part of you that is giving you any sort of an anti-thought, maybe, maybe not. That maybe not is the second slit. That second yeah. slit needs to collapse. That self-doubt needs to collapse. That whatever the negative part that your mind is perceiving is a part that is operating out of past reference. That past reference needs to resolve. Because without resolving the past reference, you are only and only once again getting into the same pattern coming all over again. You'll have to resolve that first. Yes, thank you. Sara, I can see many questions, but you're not asking. No, no, no just uh, some revelations. That I, some, some, revelations. Some, some questions I had since ages, and you just answered it. I mean, <laughs> I just thank couldn't you. explain some things, and today I got to my enlightenment. <laughs> <laughs> No, so we are going to actually take this each Wednesday, come sit and talk. This is not like 
I, I want this entire forum to be like a two-way uh, interactive part where we all grow together. That's what the ascension is all all about, which is selfless, connecting with people with thoughts, exchange ideas. There is a lot. Perhaps I might land up learning from you, from your questions, what you will share, isn't it? Like so, coming back to Sonali, now Sonali's uh, entire uh, entire uh, choice of the wallpaper or the DP that she's kept it. See, it's not a calm sea. In my understanding, the pebbles, though how colorful they are, they are breaking the wave. See the picture. It's it's the picture of movement, but which is which is scattered. There's no calmness. That is how what, what you're feeling within, Sonali. Yeah, actually, my perception is that uh, you know it is creating the froth, you know the 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 spray. So it uh, denotes why or depicts positivity to me. Why, why is the froth so important? You know, because it it denotes or depicts some kind of positive feeling for me. That's why. Oh, okay. So in your perception, when when something breaks, something like a spray, you are saying is, is positivity. Yeah. Okay. So that that's how the mind is feeling at the moment. Please stay with that awareness. Even when you're making a choice and see, see what what is what is the DP? Let's understand that. What you want others to perceive you. DP represents your sexuality. Okay. So DP, if it is your sexuality, and I, this is how I want others to perceive me, and how I am internally, sometimes it's congruent. So all your DPs, all your status messages, uh, FB updates that you put, or blog posts that you're writing, or an Instagram update, it's all a part of your sexuality. Please remember that. Yes, right. Everything is a part of your sexuality. So everything that you're portraying, portraying and projecting it to the world, there's an intent even behind that. Whatever that you're putting it, even a status message that you put it. Sometimes people keep sob stories with an intent that somebody will at least in the middle of the night will ping me and say, "Hey, what happened to you? Why are you so sad?" And there are people who are deliberately putting such updates on the status messages so that people in the middle of the night can ping and say, "Hey, what happened? Your update is about two a.m. in the morning," and that to this one, what happened? So there is an intent behind everything that you're doing, and that that intent for you. is the sacred positive intent with which you are operating out of and that positive intent you are expecting something from your environment when that uh, when let's say two friends out of 20 asked you hey how are you what happened is where you feel wanted wow i at least have a couple of good people in my environment who cares for me ah that feels nice now i can go off to sleep this is how we are we are feeling good about who we have in our environment isn't it nia You must have seen many such friends updating like that. <laughs> so please be aware. Please be aware. And I'm so happy seeing all these smiles because I know that there is some some answer that you are getting through through these interactions. Afra, Afra is very quiet today. I'm listening. Ah, so so with that, share something. Share. contribute to the entire discussion um what do you want me to contribute <laughs> no i don't want anything you tell me what are your thoughts behind whatever the yapping that we've done so far mm. well you started with the question like what are the best decisions that we made on 2020 2020 yes like yeah one thing i can think of is uh, choosing to do hypnotherapy So everybody like, made that right choice in the 2020 not bad yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> that that makes us feel good yes and what else besides hypnotherapy what is the second best choice let me hear it maybe deciding to do more outdoor activities like to try to do more new activities okay Uh, how many more activities have you done or you've just intended that you will do it because this year no resolutions please make intentions which are rock solid 
and commitments to yourself that you will do it. I'm Not planning, just like any other word. Yeah. Like uh, I'm planning to do skydiving on my birthday. <laughs> ah, not bad. And when is your birthday? It's on Feb. On Feb, which day? Third. Third Feb. Okay. <laughs> Looking forward to then. I'll wait for an update from Afra. <laughs> okay. Doing skydiving on my birthday. Not bad. But don't take that as a pressure. But it's just an intent. So intent requires a flow of action. Mere sitting with a choice in your head also may not be the right choice. Learn to fail. Learn to take the wisdom when you fail and making that choice and learn and grow. That's how I've grown. I've come this far, making all wrong choices, but yet correcting them at the end of it. I can, I can always say I am a product of all the wrong choices that I made in life. That's how I'm so strong. So choices, even when they go wrong, they make you a character which is stronger. It gives you depth. It gives you learnings. It gives you lessons. You get that? So thank you, everyone. Maybe I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk about... Do we have time? We, it's exactly about one hour, but let's conclude this with some video before we end it. I think Smita wants to leave. Smita, if you're getting late or anything like that, is that what you were saying? No, no, we're there, right? Just about five more minutes. So I'll share a screen with something that I wanted to share. No, Nia was saying bye, so I said bye. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, so here is where role of self-doubt while making a choice, okay? So I'm going to share the screen with all of you. Can you all see the screen? So full screen now? Can you all see? Um, yes. Yeah, so I'm now going to share... Can you hear? Just a minute. No, and video is uh, is there's a video. No, I'm I'm in fact trying to also share the sound from my computer. Mm. Can you just tell me if you can hear the sound as well? Can you hear the sound? No. no. Just a minute. Just. No, we can only hear your voice. Just a minute. Share sound. Now, the USS Intrepid conducting an experiment, it now? and the rules of the game couldn't be yeah. simpler. You've got to decide which one of these three straight lines is the same length as this first card. Take a look for yourself. Think you've got it? Before we reveal the answer, we'll show you where these people stand. I think it's A. 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 It's A. Yeah, I'm going to go with A. It looks like everyone is going with A. Definitely A. Do they yeah. know something you don't? What do you think? Take one last look. Are you going with these people who all picked A? Or did you choose to go with B or C? Time's up. Got your pick? Uh, it's A. You're going to go with the group? Yeah. All right. Great. Is that what you picked? Or did you go with another answer? It turns out the answer to this round is C. And while you likely chose C first and stuck with your answer, we also know that some viewers might have felt the peer pressure and switched to A. It's A. I want to ask you something. Did your gut at first tell you that the answer was actually C? Yeah, but everyone was choosing A, so I just felt like I had to pick A too. You felt the pull of the crowd. Yeah. 
In case you haven't figured it out yet, we'll let you in on a little secret. The first nine people in this line were working for us, and each time we ran the experiment, they were instructed to pick the same wrong answer. A. 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 It's A. Seeing all these people choose A left the last person in line who wasn't in on it with a tough decision to go with their gut or with a group. You're gonna go with the group? Yeah. Although not all of the test subjects at the yeah. end of the line fell for it. I think it's the... In spite of what everybody else thinks, you don't trust the wisdom of the crowd? Uh, I'm trusting my gut. Okay. To be perfectly honest, I think C looks closest. You think that they're all wrong? Yeah. Okay. Hi, guys. <laughs> and don't beat yourself up if you were tempted to go along with the crowd. Make your choice. I have to go with A. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. What happened? I have a confession. Okay. I, I actually thought it was C. So. Did you start to question your own judgment? I did. I don't want to be the dumb kid. I don't want to stand out. You know, I was like, A. Have you ever ignored the truth to fit in with a group? Just think, what if those weren't lines, but evidence in a murder case? Would you be able to see past the group consensus and just go with your gut? Studies show that when someone holds a different opinion than the rest of the group, the anterior cingulate cortex, also known as the oops area of the brain, produces an error signal. We try to fix that by modifying our opinion to be in line with the group, even if it's a viewpoint we're uncomfortable with or know is wrong. And that's because there are some major evolutionary advantages for those who follow along with the group, namely survival. If you want to stay safe, stay with the herd. Can't see you. Oh, there we go. Can't see you. Yes. Hello? Yeah. So your self-doubt is one of your biggest enemies for making choices. And the peer pressure that we all feel at some or the other point in time. So please be aware, before you make a choice, check with your body. So just summarizing our entire interaction for today, keep your self-esteem very high, chase every reality, enter into this one, go chase that reality to the next level, come back and check how your body is making you feel. The one, and rate each reality and the outcome based on zero to 10. Whichever is the outcome that gives you maximum satisfaction and security is the choice that you make. Never before state, Never make a choice out of a self-doubt or a void. Deal with all your inner children before you get into a choice and make peace with the choice that you're going to make and be fine with being failed. So even when you make the choice, how anxious are you feeling or how secured are you feeling? And when the outcome or after making a choice, please do not regret the choice. Be ready for whatever coming your way and learn even if the outcome is unfavorable. Have you got the Rajesh ji, we, uh, we say that we are making choice, but also there is another way of looking at that everything is destined. Uh, it seems like we are making choice, but everything is destined and happening. The universe is rolling out the plan for us. Agreed. So, hi. when you're making a choice, Smita, see, and we all know the concept of a highway. Highway is destined. But since we have a flexible neck to look left and right, because we, we were never given the fixed uh, neck, with the free will, you try to take a detour. That is where you make a cellular memory life. So when you, when you stick to acceptance and walking your highest path is where I'm saying that while being on the highway, check with your body. Your body is your body telling you take a detour. No, stand there. Make alignment and then walk. That's your highest path. That's your highway, which is destined. Okay. From that destiny, when out of a void, out of a fear, when you take a detour or jump off is where you're taking a parallel reality, which is again, the undesired path. So come back on the highway, stand there, heal, and then grow to the next level. Nothing you will try to avoid, escape, no defenses is where you'll walk your highest path. So always keep the focus that what choice is leading me to walk my highest path. And even after you walked your highest path with, let's say, a person who's still abusive, 
even walking out is a choice that you will need to make but because that's with highest self esteem that's with highest acceptance that's with learning from the wisdom of what you've learned from that abusive relationship close that and then move on to the next choice close that chapter not that you're quitting resolve learn and then move on that's where the destiny and free will are the two dichotomous parts but the only one singular thing that you are uh, which you are uh, doing is to walk your highest path so always assess what is your highest path with once again your body your body will once again never lie to you stand there resolve and then move on because once you resolve and move on you'll never ever get pain response from the destiny can i ask a question yes sara so let's say like i have a friend who hmm. who's been like um you know i i i never realized the way you know uh, she was acting was a bit uh, abusive let's say so all of a sudden i realized and me without realizing though i i started to get uh, to get far, far right so at the end even in, even without knowing i was keeping my distance and um, she got completely upset and started to totally avoid me hmm. so in that case do i still have to resolve it or i just leave it no so if it is the choice that your friend made that she was expecting a certain help or guidance from you and you stayed neutral is what i understood from what you said right yeah, you didn't help her out for i i didn't even realize actually i was keeping her far because my body was actually reacting you know actually it was like my body was like i can't take this so i just step i just did one step back and i say like for okay she's holding you responsible my my friend Yeah. I I am not sure because she never talked to me. But then she never I mean, spoke yes, to you and she is gone. Yes. You lost a friend. She told she told my friends she she's been complaining to my friends like for two and a half to three and a half months without even telling me anything. If it is affecting you and if it's a dear friend maybe if I'm in your place I would go speak to her and check and tell her genuinely what you felt. No, that but I don't what... think it's a good relationship. I don't think it's a good friendship. This one, I, I, it's actually not a good friendship. And not regret. Then, then you should move on and not regret. I if, don't have if, to resolve anything. Nothing. If if the friend has chosen not to talk to you, you should move on because if, if it is not the choice that you made and if something that was hampering your own, uh, you were getting toxic about it. Yes. Detached. if the destiny brings that friend back to you then there is definitely something that you need to resolve you get that so for once yeah. you move on that's okay if she is meant to come back to you she'll come some way but give her a lot of love from wherever you are and then that part of you which got uh, the negative vibes and all of that just resolve with that eft and say i leave with you what belongs to you under your responsibility take your energy is back and move on okay do the part cutting or energy exchange ego states okay okay and if there is a guilt or there is a associated secondary emotion just breathe it out and release it so it's with... just a bit of a, a void because uh, she's been there for years and then all of a sudden you know i i feel a bit of but to be honest with you i understand the toxicity of the thing and i i feel it's better like that you, yeah, so you know yeah. if there is a void then you need to see what that friend gave you and if it's a long association that friend meant something so when a part is gone a part of your energy is gone take that take that energy okay. back okay take Thank that you. energy back you need to yeah yes okay. safra unmute please i can't hear you okay uh, how do i know if i have energies from like uh, from a past relationship or whatever old friendship if i have that how do you i i i'm sorry i did not get your question uh, how do i know if i have energies that are not mine like from old friendship or relationship the moment your thoughts keep going back to the previous relationship you have the energy for sure uh, okay as long as your thoughts getting drawn to that person from where you moved on your energies are there there is a cord that itself is evidence 
because if you had truly moved on you would not think about that person anymore and it will not give you any emotion charge you get that i'm sure we will meet soon uh, in level 4 after you will know all these answers very soon we are looking forward to thank level 3 and level 4 so thank you everyone bye bye wish you all a very very happy new year and see you on next wednesday bye bye thank you rajiv bye bye thank you thank you thank you thank you for being bye there bye. take care bye bye see you soon thank you bye 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 skita bye. Bye. bye everybody bye 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 Bye, Tyal. Bye, Rama. Bye, Rama. Bye, guys. See you soon. See, See you. Soon. Thank you, Rajesh sir. Thank you. Bye, bye, Rama. Take care. Take care. Bye.